Welcome back YouTube. Now that we've got a fresh battery in our camera, as you can see, night has fallen and we're still August 31st, uh, night of the blue moon. And we've got our setup out here. Um, from the previous video that I made before the battery died, um, we were talking about getting the mount and everything set up nice and level, which we've done. Um, the only thing that I've really done differently and uh, something that I wanted to share with y'all was we were aligned to the North Star. Of course, you can't see it um, because of all the lights and everything else, but we've, we did, went ahead and did the polar alignment. Everything worked out really good there. Um, we're set in. The one thing I am going to do is recheck my polar alignment now that we're getting close to setup on our telescope. And one of the things that I've done now that I've got a good polar alignment um, for the time that I did about two hours ago is I took and out here on the concrete, I don't know how well that's going to show up, but you can see I put a little white paint mark right there at the base of the tripod. And um, right here on this one, you can see that one pretty good because I got the porch light helping me out. And you can see where I put one here on that one. So what that does, um, that was a, the first mark that I made. That was just a, a start out point. I'll take some brake cleaner and get that erased off the concrete so I don't. there's no confusion later on. And what that does is when I bring the mount out and set the mount up each and every time, um, now that I've got a good polar alignment and I've taken the chance to set up the mount, um, basically I shouldn't have to do very much fine tuning as far as getting Polaris into my polar finder. And that was really the goal that I wanted to achieve here. And that's, it's just something simple. Um, that just, it, it, you know, just putting some dots down on the ground. If you got a, a nice concrete pad in a place that you're going to want to set up on. And we may change this later on down the road. But for now, it gives you a good solid place. You can just you put the front tripod on, the bottom, uh, the back two legs. Um, one of the other things I did want to mention was... Um, when you look at your tripod, there's always what's called, um, what I like to call a north leg on the tripod. And basically, you got your back two legs for stability, and then you got a front leg that your head sits directly over top of. That's called the north leg. And that leg always needs to face north. And you know that was just another reason to mark the concrete to set up little dots to just simply I can get the, the tripod back in the uh, a very close area of alignment to where now I don't have to spend so much time setting this thing up and everything else and don't worry if you ain't got your tripod out here it just looks like some little bird poo or something on your back porch it's not like you got some big globs of paint or anything else you know they're only about maybe the size of a dime or so or a nickel on um, paint spots to, to help you get get your tripod lined back up you can see there and there um, you don't have to be exact like I said you've got you've got ways to get the North Star tuned in on your your head and the, the dots just help you get in the general vicinity every single time so now that we got that done um, we're waiting on the telescope to to pretty much acclimate to the climate outside it's pretty humid tonight um it did get up almost 90 today and don't know that you're going to get a good shot at oh yeah there you go you can see how much humidity is formed on it just already um just bring it out just letting the telescope kind of get warmed up to the outside get used to the to the humidity and you can see the corrector lens is good and clear. Um, I had a real big issue with that the other night. Um, of course, it was a very, very humid night the other night. We had fog rolling in and everything else. So um, tonight, you can just see, you know, you can just see the humidity 
um, you know, just making it real, real moist. We'll give the telescope about another 30 minutes to set up and uh, just, you know, let it get acclimated to the temperature and we'll go ahead and start the alignment process and get this thing going. You can see I haven't even got the mount, um, the weights put on the mount yet and I don't know if you can see the weight bar. I've got the weight bar stuck up in the air, of course, that's where I did the, the first polar alignment. I set the, the time grids on the polar finder and got that all dialed in and adjusted and uh, I'm gonna recheck it again right here before we turn the scope on to make sure we're still in sync. And uh, basically, we did get the right star. Um, not wanting to sound a little shoddy on that, but you know, you never know. Um, we're just gonna recheck that again. And uh, at that time, we're gonna get this thing set up. And um, we've got about another. You can see the. You can see from the. The back door there to the edge of the concrete that's exactly 18 feet out so i'm about 15 foot off the back of the house it's where my setup is and i'm standing probably about 24 25 feet out and look at there there's the moon so um we're definitely got a good night you can see it's just a nice big, it almost looks like a street light, it's so big and bright. But another, probably about another hour, we're going to definitely be in range. Um, as you can see, as I move up closer to the mount, I'm standing right over top of the mount now. And the moon is just cresting over the top of the house. So, I want to make sure that we got good dark um, light out here, which, yeah, I've got on two lights I'm the one lighting up the neighborhood but uh but when I cut those out we get everything set up um we're gonna be good to go and get this baby aligned and um get everything set up um right here I've got a little tv stand here with my 40 millimeter I'll take that out so you can see it my 40 millimeter um eyepiece I'm gonna put in my two inch um because this is a two inch eyepiece my two inch ring and for those that are just wondering um let me just show you this is a 12 ounce corona and that there is a 40 millimeter mead apostle 5000 eyepiece you can just see how big that thing is I mean it is literally just huge um, it's a great um, lunar eyepiece. Um, this is the first time I'm, I'm going to get a chance to use it. I can't wait. Um, I've got a couple inch and a quarter eyepieces here. I've um, got a 26, um, 25, and a, I think a 14 or a 9 mil uh, eyepiece that we're going to try out. Um, the adapter is already in the, the scope for the quarter inch and a quarter eyepieces i'm going to change that out when we get ready to use them and uh and everything everything's looking real good tonight so hopefully we'll get some good some good video and i'm going to try to take some good pictures through my uh my new mead lxd 75 10 inch that i got used so we'll check back with you in a few minutes